So let's talk about post-procedure common complaints. I, I put up a list and, and I, I wanted to, to have your, your take on this. So let's say it's already six weeks out or eight, eight weeks out and the patient says that the, the, the pump is difficult to, to find uh, or you're having, you're having difficulty pumping it. Uh, what do you tell the patient? It was such a common complaint in my practice that I actually even decided to create a YouTube video on what are the best practices to uh, find the pump, how to locate the pump, how to deflate, how to inflate the pump. And there's multiple, you know, ways to how to, you know, grab it in, in your hand, are you, which fingers to use, which muscles in your forearm to use. Um, and it took me probably about you know, three weeks to, you know, put that video together. And, and again, it, it's paid off a ton. And I've right now, I, I'm, I've been actually to, I've been actually able to decrease the amount of calls that I get, um, or text messages in my case, because again, the, most of these guys, they even have my cell phone. So I, I, that's one of the ways that, I, that I've been able to mitigate those complaints. But yeah, I mean, when the pump is difficult to find, I mean, you just have to sit down with them and you have to explain to them, you know, what is the orientation of the pump? I show them the pump, you know, like the keychain that the company provides. And I show them how to, you know, how it's oriented within their scrotum. One of the best tricks that they can use is warm baths. Cause in the warm bath, the, you know, the warm water will create, it will make the scrotum be a little bit softer. Uh, the scrotum will be saggier and they will be able to feel the parts a lot, a lot better. And again, know your audience. I mean, I try to avoid placing, for example, the coloplast Titan implant tends to be a little bit more difficult to deflate because that button tends to be a little bit flatter, especially when you use a one touch pump. So for those guys, I try not to use that pump if I'm using a coloplast or I would just go with the Boston scientific, uh, pump so that they can actually feel for things. So again, I mean, it's just knowing your audience. If you have a really old guy, I try to avoid, you know, placing a difficult pump that they, they're going to struggle with. Yeah, definitely. I mean, then you, you can try, you think where you're doing the procedure is perfect and then it retracts or, you know, let's say it's, it's six months after the procedure and they still have any issues. What, 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 what do you do then? So it really depends. I mean, if I, if I notice that the pump is not well placed or, or if it's too posterior, I mean, we can try placing it more like anteriorly, like me, for example, whenever I place my pumps, I try to place them right on the front of the scrotum. Cause when, when they're very posterior, especially on older guys. It's going to be more difficult for them to find it for younger guys. I mean, they, they, they get it. Um, it's not rocket science for them. So yeah. they're able to, to make it work. But I mean, sometimes you just have to reposition it. And I mean, if it becomes an issue that they cannot, you know, work it at all, you have two options. You can leave the device kind of like 80% inflated for them, or you can just switch them out to a malleable. Um, okay. of course that's the last resort. And I, sometimes I have the local reps from the companies, they come in and they, you know, they sit down with the patient, they're here in my office and they can spend, you know, 30 minutes with them trying to explain to them how to make it work. Good, good. And, and it's a good, good thing that you mentioned the malleable. I mean, I, I don't use it that much, but mm -hmm. there's some patients that, that, that that's the way to go in order to prevent any problems. Let's put it this way. I just recently, probably about, you know, six or seven months ago, I had this patient who everything, you know, he came into the office, he requested the inflatable penile implant, we put it in and then post-op, I find, I know, I, I find out that he comes in for his post-op appointment. I teach him how to use it. I, I send him the video for him to start, you know, uh, cycling the implant. And then two weeks later, the guy comes back for teaching. I teach him again. I'm like, well, fine, whatever. And then three weeks later, he comes back again. And I'm like, wait, what's going on? And what I find out is the guy's ha is having early Alzheimer's. And I didn't even know yeah. from prior to the, to the surgery. And right now the guy has already showed up to my office like five times. So those are the yeah. types of things that you have to be aware of. I mean, if you have a guy who still, I mean, I, I'm not going to prohibit him from getting a penile prosthesis, but you have to be very aware, especially if they're single, they don't have somebody who can inflate the, or cycle the implant for them. You have, it has to be uh, kept in your radar that you should probably, you know, place a malleable for these guys.